Hi, and welcome to another edition of Backstage with the Boss Cubs, Berks Jazz Fest here on The People Chronicles. My name is Joe Painter, and many thanks to the Berks Arts Council for making this series possible. And our guest backstage this afternoon is Jeff Tuperon. Hi, Jeff. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate being here. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure, and it's nice to meet you. To put the face with the voice, and I'm sure you've heard that over the years. Jeff, Indeed. you are a well-known uh, jazz show host on WRTI. And currently, you're on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings. Yes. So, see, just talk to me. You'll, you'll hear the voice. <laughs> it's it's been uh, an experience. It's been what uh, 20 years now, I think, since I've been on the you're air. You're doing WRTI. it 20 years. Yeah, and in total 30 because I'm originally from New Orleans, and we moved up here, my wife and I and kids, uh, in 1996. So we had a chance to, uh, as soon as I got here, went right to WRTI, and Tell got involved. Me why? Uh, because I was involved with public radio in New Orleans, and I oh, okay. truly en enjoyed the community aspect of radio. Mm -hmm. And that's what WRTI was at the time and still is today. It's a community-oriented radio station, and we like to connect with the community and things that are happening in the community, which is why we've connected with the Boscovsburg's Jazz Festival. We've been From with the, the festival, yes, yeah. 27 years now. So it's years. been wonderful, wonderful relationship, and it's grown exponentially over the last several years because we have this, uh, this ability now to come into Reading with a box about this big, right, instead of a truck. Isn't it, has, it amazing yeah, the difference with technology? the technology is amazing, that. you know. And so I can come here, I can set up and, uh, and broadcast back to Philadelphia and to our region and let everybody hear the sights and sounds through my eyes of what's happening at the Boscovsburg Jazz Festival. So now wait, let's back up. I wasn't even thinking about that. You are, you will be here. Yes. As part of the fest and broadcasting live. Yes. In fact, Bob Perkins is coming on the first Sunday, is as he? he has the last several years, and we, uh, we attend a jazz brunch. And so we have a chance to, to meet a lot of the artists that are performing, and uh, mm -hmm. Bob does interviews with them. And I do the same. I, I have an opportunity to talk with many of the artists during the course of the, uh, the festival. And uh, working collaboratively with Gerald Beasley, you know, we've been able to ensure that people hear and know about the festival. You know, mm -hmm. that if you mm -hmm. want to come to the festival, it's not that much of a drive from Philadelphia to Reading to come. So we've been trying to get people, more and more people, to come to the festival and enjoy the ambiance of the festival. And you've been doing a great job with that. A large part of the audience for Boscow's Berks Jazz Fest is from out of town. And we say that all the time. People travel from literally across the country to come to the festival, certainly up and down the East Coast. And as often happens, Sometimes, oh yeah, the Boscovs Berks Jazz Fest again right here, and maybe I've done that one year and I'm not coming back this year, I'll go again. And there's a lot of ahas as well, because you say, Boscovs Berks Jazz Fest, well, I'm not a jazz fan. But it's so, so much more, and s I mean, how do you describe jazz? You, you can't, in one word, because it's not a singular genre. It's tough, it's yeah. tough, and there's so many different styles of jazz. Right? You know, so, uh, it, we, we were talking earlier about how do you come into jazz? You know, do you come in with uh, listening to some of the masters, or do you come in listening to artists from your own age bracket? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a mixture of both. You know, I think that one of the things I, I love about the festival is that it brings together a different style of jazz, different eras, yep. different styles, yep. both smooth jazz or what people refer to as smooth jazz, and also classic jazz. And so you have all that music that you can, if you're a new listener to jazz, uh, you have a chance to go and see all these different styles around the festival. And I know we're going to talk about it in a minute, but one of the things I really like is the fact that collaborations between the festival mm -hmm. and other entities within the community have come to fruition. The, oh, uh, the South goodness, Kitchen so and Jazz many. Parlor so you know, is one that uh, this year uh, WRTI is the media partner for, and there are 13 uh, concerts that are going to be held at the downtown Doubletree Hotel that showcase all the different styles. So Dr. Lonnie Smith is going to be there. Yeah and Anat Cohen and Eric Marenthal and all these different artists that are going to be performing. So you can hear it in one spot. You can hear all these different styles of music. Let's back up a little bit to the South Kitchen Jazz Parlor. That's a well-known um, jazz club, if you will, in Philadelphia and I believe one of the top 50 in the nation. Indeed. And so you're kind of going to make a, a sort of replica of that inside a ballroom at the Doubletree, is that correct? That's that's my understanding uh, yeah. from John Onesto. He, he wants to recreate the South 
ambiance and environment in the double tree. So, so the that's backdrop. my question. What is the energy and the ambiance of that? Oh, Can you share that? Yes, it's it's uh, a club in Philadelphia. It's a uh, a new venue that seats 60 individuals. So it's intimate. It's intimate. Okay. It's um, it's got a great sight line to the stage. Uh, there's no bad seat in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, the the artists that are brought in there are nationally and internationally known as well as local artists. Mm -hmm. So it has uh, this opportunity to to bring in a lot of different people. Some who may, in fact, on Thursday nights, Gerald Beasley does his unscripted jazz series. Yes. I'm the host on Wednesday night for what I call the evolution of jazz reimagined, where I'm trying to find young artists who are taking the music, using jazz as a foundation, mm -hmm. but blending different styles of music like classical or rhythm and blues or hip hop or... So they're taking that jazz and going, where can we go with this? Yes, exactly. Which jazz is what is jazz their, is all about. Exactly. Jazz is their foundation. Yeah. It allows them to improvise and they can bring in, if, if it's an Israeli artist, he can bring in traditional Israeli music mm -hmm. or someone from any ethnic background yep. and play their traditional songs and use jazz as the foundation to give them that, that opportunity to improvise. So you do a blend of that on your show at WRTI, and we were talking about that as well, um, keeping true to traditional, but yet what is traditional? Because when traditional was current, they, it was cutting edge and innovative. So what's jazz today? Is it staying true to traditional or should you be cutting edge and innovative? And you're taking a blend of that and it's, allowing that space to open up. In, in fact, uh, it, it's one of the things that uh, I enjoy doing because yeah. there's a lot of new artists on the scene today mm -hmm. that if you'd like to go and see them, you can. The artists of years gone by aren't on the scene anymore, right? So if you want to hear that music, you can hear it embodied in the new artist, but they're also incorporating the music that they grew up with. You know, so they may have grown up with, uh, with hard rock. There's a band called The Bad Plus. Mm -hmm. Their music is a blend of, of jazz and rock music. You know, so I mean, there's, there's so many different ways that you can expand on the music and on the audience. And what I'm trying to do is expand on bringing a younger audience in because the audience that listens to jazz is graying and we need to improve the, the, the number of people who are listening to jazz right now. Why do you think, Jeff, it's important to preserve jazz, so to speak? Because the audience is uh, perhaps an older audience, the, the, um, the purest audience. So there's two questions here, actually. If you could fast forward 60 years, the new stuff we're talking about now, will that be the traditional jazz? And why? Is it important? What does jazz do for a person and for a community? The most important thing that you have to realize is jazz is the only original art form created in the United States. And, and because, there's thought of that. Yes, and because of that, it's a heritage that's been going on now over 100 years. So it's what we've given to the world in terms of art. And when you can take that and, and, and to your question about expanding into the future 60 years from now, whatever is happening at that moment, the jazz music should have evolved during that time frame. Right. Just like when Miles Davis was, was creating music, mm -hmm. his all time, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? The, the all time classic is the right word, uh, Kind of Blue. It's the highest selling oh. jazz record of all time. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have something that's still relevant today that people listen to. It might be their, their way of, of entering into the jazz realm mm -hmm. just to get a, a starting point. And then they can go anywhere they want to go because they can listen to every other artist that was involved in that project. John Coltrane was involved with it, Cannonball Adderley, wow. you know, uh, Bill Evans. There's so many different people that you can go and listen to individually who contributed to that project. So when you think in terms of what this music means to us, it's our contribution to the world. You know, people don't realize that towels weren't created here in the U.S. I didn't think about <laughs> what you just said. I never really thought about jazz as American music. Yes, it absolutely is. And, uh, and that to me is, I think, most important. And we need to preserve our heritage. Yes. You know, yeah. What we do at WRTI is we present, we preserve, and we promote the great American art form, jazz. That's what John does here. 
And you do it really, this is a perfect, perfect match, and I'm so grateful that you be here. Did you have a, a hand um, in selecting who would be appearing at the uh, jazz parlor at the Doubletree? No, I do on occasion, yeah. though. Sometimes John will call me and, and ask me about different artists. You know, one artist that, uh, that John wanted to get here uh, a few years ago, and it took some time to get here, was Gregory Porter. Yeah. Gregory was here just a couple of years ago, and uh, it was just an amazing performance. Um, he's one of the top vocalists in jazz today. And those are the types of artists that you want to have coming to your festival. Uh, the blending of different styles of music at this festival is what entices me to want to come every year because... Is that what makes this festival unique? It does. In your mind? For me, yes. Okay. And, and, and here's why. Uh, for a long time, uh, there's been this rift between jazz communities that smooth jazz was not really jazz. There is, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I can tell you and your audience that that's not true at all. Trust me, the, the artists I've heard here at the Berks Jazz Festival, smooth jazz, straight ahead jazz, they all can play. They mm -hmm. all can improvise. And, and I was one of those individuals, I was part of the jazz police. Were you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't think that they would play because they were playing popular music of the day, instrumental covers of popular music, and in the way the format, the radio format in was jazz set up. style. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't that much improvisation. It was just they were reading uh, the music a a as a composed. So they didn't piece make it their music. own. Exactly. Um, versus improvised. It was composed versus improvised. And when I listened to those artists perform in a jam session that Gerald Beasley. That's incredible. Conducted. Those sessions are oh, great. Uh, it, it, it showed me that these artists actually have the, the chops to play the instrument. And they can come into a, um, an improvised scenario and play um, something that's called on the bandstand. And it's not you know, any traditional song that you would imagine you know, or anything yep. that, you, you know, that you would think is, is easy to play, because it's not. They have to bring their A game. And that, to me, is, is the fun part of this festival. It allows you to hear a lot of different styles. And if it's something that you've never heard before, you have an opportunity in the window to, uh, to go and hear it performed by someone that uh, is a world-class musician. You nailed it for me. One of my favorite parts of the Boscovs Brooks Jazz Fest is exposure to new artists that I've never heard of before, I've never seen, and I always make it a point to pick one that I'm not familiar with so that I can go have a wow moment. And they happen at Boscovs Brooks Jazz Fest. I can see that you are anticipating it with quite a bit of uh, excitement and passion. Looking and we look forward for, to yeah, it. We're um, grateful for the relationship with WRTI and, and the exposure piece and what you do with your program on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings well, at thank WRTI. You. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff.